dear friends welcome to this electrical engineering knowledge sharing channel amp power system workshop uh, we have already completed two parts of session 8 that is ac motor protection now today we will discuss the last part of session 8 that is part 3 and in the part 3 we will discuss about this lock rotor protection uh, in a special case then we'll discuss uh, unbalanced protection we'll discuss this over temperature uh, condition of the rotor then art for protection of the rotor both uh, induction motor as well as synchronous motor we'll discuss about under voltage protection under frequency protection reverse rotation protection under current protection of the uh, starter winding as well as rotor winding then we will discuss about the loss of excitation protection and pole slipping. Then we will discuss bearing temperature, bearing vibration and uh, we will also discuss to some extent about the application of the protection functions to various size of motors. That will be our discussion today and with this we will complete session 8 AC motor protection. Let us start. We have already discussed face fault protection, art fault protection. Uh, over temperature protection or overload protection as well as we have discussed the lock rotor protection in the previous section in the previous part part 2. In the lock rotor protection we have said that uh, during the jam condition or if this uh, locked uh, rotor uh, high due to high inertia load if the lock rotor condition takes place or if this uh, during running condition if there is a single facing or there is a huge under voltage if there is a single facing in that case also motor will not able to cater the adequate look to the torque even though uh, uh, maybe two of the uh, the phases which is not open circuited other two phases will carry out 86 percent of the uh, lock rotor current still motor may not able to produce required torque and motor can get a stand state this is we have discussed to some extent considering that motor lock rotor with a stand time is more than motor starting time and secondly the relay operating time is less than uh, either starting time or lock rotor time that is we have on it less than the starting time that is we have considered in the case of previous now it may happen that lock rotor with a stand time of the motor is less than motor starting time it may happen like that otherwise maybe protection relay uh, is not able to coordinate with the lock rotor time protection relay operating time is more than the lock rotor time if the lock rotor time is very less motor lock rotor with a stand time uh, let us uh, draw how it is. Suppose this is a lock rotor current. This is the current flowing to the motor and this is the time. Suppose the lock rotor with a stand time of the motor is over here. Yeah? And uh, motor protection is operating like this. So this is the oper at this lock rotor current. It is the lock rotor with a stand time. And motor is a protection relay device is operated at this time. So the lock rotor, suppose this is 8 second and protection is operating 10 seconds in this case it will not protect that is one of the case like that other case it may happen motor is starting has taken place but the motor starting time is above the lock rotor the amount of time it can withstand motor starting time is more than the lock rotor time motor can withstand up to this lock rotor this is the withstand time and suppose motor starting time characteristics is like this so in that case what will happen in that way, this is your motor starting time. This is a suppose this is a full load. This current is started like this, and it is a six time current. And it is a full load current. This is a starting at six. This is a starting current, maybe six times. So this is a starting time. This is a uh, time. So the start is this is the starting time. Maybe this is a 10 second. And motor lock rotor with a stand time is only eight second. If that is the case, in that case, if motor fail to start then we cannot wait up to 8 second up to 10 second because motor lock rotor with a stand time with the 6 time lock rotor can it can with a stand only a, this time, amount of time this may be 8 second only it can with a stand and this a starting time is 10 second so if the motor lock rotor take place within 8 second motor will burn after 8 second motor will burn but it will i have to wait up to 10 second in that case we cannot use the previous method which we said by the uh, lock rotor protection 51s or we say 51 LR lock rotor this protection through the CT which we provide we cannot protect the motor from this in that case what we have to do 
we cannot wait up to the motor starting time. In this case, if this lock rotor with a stand time of the motor is less than motor starting time, if a starting PS motor starting time is less than motor, uh, if motor starting time is more than, is greater than lock rotor time, lock rotor time, then if the lock rotor time is less than the motor starting time, then we cannot go, go by the 51 L relay. In that case, what we have to do? We have to make a necessary arrangement different way. We have to sense the speed of the rotor, whether the rotor is rotating when we press the start button, immediately we have to sense the speed of the rotor. If the rotor speed comes up, then we understand motor is rotating. That means lock rotor condition is not there, motor getting started. So with the speed switch, we have to protect the motor from the lock rotor. So what we have to put, we put a speed sensor on the, this is a motor shaft, yeah, and on the motor shaft we put a speed sensor, we put a speed sensor over here, we will sense the pick up this speed, and this speed sensor we call it is a 12 is a speed switch, with the speed switch with the timer, we have to use it, timer is a 2 is a timer, so if the rotor start to rotate, then the pick up will get a same voltage, it will get a signal that the rotor is rotating, that means it is not a standstill. still, then we will wait up to certain time. Suppose the time is, uh, the starting time is 10 seconds, we may start 4 seconds. So after 4 seconds, we will see whether if this speed switch signal is there, then after 4 seconds, the relay will, relay will not give any signal or it may be a different way. It, it will wait up to 4 seconds. If the 4 seconds, this signal is not is absent, we have this uh, uh, speed switch signal is absent, means there is no speed. Then immediately maybe uh, starting time 8 seconds, immediately it will after 4 seconds it will trip. Or uh, it will not wait up to the starting time, before that it will trip. But if there is a signal, immediately after 4 seconds, uh, if the signal is there, then this, this combination will not work out. By this way, the speed switch with the timer, we can protect, we have to protect this type of uh, load, this type of uh, load combination, load and motor combination, where the motor starting time is mm, is motor starting time is more than motor lock rotor time. If the starting time is more than lock rotor time, in that case, we have to use a switch with the timer to protect from the lock rotor. Okay, this is the lock rotor protection for this, and we have already discussed about the during running condition. If the lock rotor takes place, in that case, uh, the uh, uh, to help the phases where the power supply is going. Suppose so this is a motor, we have already discussed about there is a contactor open over here. This is a one of the phase, and these are the three phases. This is a motor. If during this time, the suppose motor is running at the full speed at this time with the delivering the required kilowatt, suddenly one of the phases is open, then what will happen? Other two phases will carry huge current and that current goes up to 86.6% of the lock rotor current. It can go. So under this condition, what will happen? There is over current delay. Over current will because these two phases, this two phase has a high current. It is about 46%, 86% of lock rotor current, 86 into 6 times. That is equal to about five times of the full load current is flowing to this, and this is not carrying any current. So these two phases over current relay will operate. It may operate. If not operate, we have a unbalanced protection 50 or 50 uh, 51 n uh, 51 protection is there. Uh, 50 uh, 50 n or 51 n unbalanced protection by CVCT or by over current relay. This uh, 51 n summation CT connected. We have already shown. So these will operate on the unbalanced condition. Considering this is a uh, unsymmetrical current flowing through this, so this will be considering the 50N immediately will operate and that will trip the breaker. So there are two types of protection, either this two phase over current relay 51 will operate or 50 may, may operate, okay, this two phase 50 operate, otherwise then due to by CVCT, the 50N protection which is provided by CVCT, that can protect the motor from this unbalanced running condition, unbalanced condition. So this is for the lock rotor protection. And now we will discuss about this unbalanced protection of the motor. Now we have seen that motor uh, is connected, suppose this is a breaker and this is a motor is connected, these are the motor, this is a star connected motor is connected over here. Now uh, in this case if the, there is different type of unbalance can take place, one of the way is suppose the system voltage which is coming over here, the system voltage is unbalanced, it may happen the total system voltage is unbalanced. That may happen. Another way it may happen that one of the phases is open. In that case, also voltage will get unbalanced. That is also possibility is there. Or maybe due to load, maybe load variation from the load side, some imbalance is coming due to vibration of the pump 
or vibration of the load so an unbalance is coming mechanical unbalance is coming which is ultimately transferred to the uh, motor side and motor is getting unbalanced if this unbalance from any way the unbalance is coming either from the system or from the motor or from the load side then the unbalanced voltage will be coming to the motor then it has a uh, 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 what situation it may it, it can deteriorate the motor health how because we know this unbalanced voltage when it is come to a motor we can split the unbalanced voltage in three phase positive phase positive sequence negative sequence and zero sequence the positive sequence current is producing heating as per positive sequence there's no problem but the negative sequence voltage which is coming out of unbalanced protection unbalanced voltage that has a negative consequences <coughs> sorry negative consequences on the motor how it is happening we know the negative sequence voltage is rotating in the reverse direction of the positive sequence voltage so with respect to the positive sequence voltage negative sequence voltage frequency is two times if it is a 50 hertz negative sequence frequency will be 100 100 hertz that is the negative sequence voltage and if this hertz voltage is uh, when is this flux linking when this starter winding carrying this uh, voltage or corresponding current then it will be linking the flux with the rotor winding the rotor winding then automatically rotor is rotating with a certain slip in that case rotor winding will induce a current which is a whose uh, frequency will be 2 minus s into frequency so if this slip at the uh, synchronous speed the slip is zero in that case it will be 2f but if the motor is rotating with a certain slip of 0.95 in that case it will be 1.1 in that case if it is a point suppose instead of zero it may be point, uh, uh, may be 0 0.01%, 0 0.01, then it will be slightly less than 2. So it may be nearly 1, uh, 180 hertz to 100 hertz, that type of frequency, uh, frequency induced current will be induced in the rotor, and the rotor will be due to the high frequency, rotor will be, uh, you know, the rotor loss, the rotor has a too low, uh, rotor has a, when the rotor is operating on the short circuit condition, so it has a, uh, due to with the short circuit current with the higher frequency, the stress and eddy current loss will increase and that will give a negative heating on the rotor as well as it will produce more heating on the starter due to the negative sequence current because the frequency is double we have already seen hysteresis is loss is a proportional to the frequency and eddy current loss is a proportion to the square of the frequency so if the frequency goes up heating will be more more loss will be there and that will be converted to heat so motor winding will get up heat up so to protect this motor from this unbalanced condition we provide unbalanced unbalance, uh, voltage unbalance or current unbalance protection. There are two ways we can do this. Suppose this is a voltage bus and from here the various motors are uh, supplied. So there are the multiple motors are there. One of the way we can put a PT over here and then on the PT we can put a voltage balance relay. We call it 60 voltage balance relay. Okay. Voltage balance relay. If the multiple motors are there, we can use like this way voltage balance relay. And this voltage balance relay, when the voltage is balanced, all the three of these out voltage relay will not pick up. The moment there, suppose I have put a 4% unbalance, so the moment there is a 4% unbalance in the voltage, immediately this relay will pick up and that will trip this breaker. All these motor breaker will be tripped by this way. This is one of the way you can give it. Another way we can do it by individually, if there is not so many motors, only two or three or one big motors are connected. In that case, instead of going by this voltage balance relay, we can give a uh, unbalanced protection either by negative sequence current or negative sequence voltage. We have already discussed during the generator protection how we provide the negative sequence voltage protection. In that case, what we provide, what we do with the, um, suppose this is a motor and we connect two CT. Yeah, suppose this is a three phase motors. Suppose this is A phase, this is a B phase and C phase. What we do, we put as two CT. One CT we put on the C phase. A phase and another seat we provide on the C phase. Then what do we do on the C phase? This two, there are two city. Now this two city, what do we do? This city we put a resistance or reactance over here. And in this city, what do we do? We bring this city over here, we put a resist resistance over here, and then we shorting over here. So this this is the C phase is doing like this, and A phase is doing like this. It is only resistance and reactance. It is only suppose it is R1. This is R2, it is a RSC phase and it is a A phase. When you do this combination, what will happen? We decide the R C phase resistance reactance, R phase reactance and resistance in such a way so that the ohmic value of this will be equal to the ohmic value of this. Okay, 
and the uh, uh, power factor or the factor of this or this or this cos phi of this ohmic value first of all ohmic value of this rc plus xc will be equal to ohmic value of ra and the phase angle due to this rc and uh, the phase angle of this or the c phase uh, angle c phase voltage or current angle will be theta equal to 60 degree we will make the combination rc and xc in such a way this cos phi cos inverse theta cos inverse or cos theta equal to equal to 0.5 so that the value of rc and xc will decide in such a way that cos theta equal between this xc and rc cos theta equal to 5 in that case the angle will be 60 degree the voltage will be leading or current will be lagging by 60 degree from the c phase voltage okay if we make this combination then we can we can show that this uh, c phase and a phase uh, c phase voltage in the positive sequence voltage will be nullified only the negative sequence voltage will be there that is we have already discussed in this during general protection but i am showing once again suppose this is a uh, this is a, a va or it is a or ia va or ia IA, this is a IB and this is a IC. This angle is 120 degrees and positive. For the negative sequence, how it will be? Suppose this is a VA or IA and this then in the negative sequence it will be IC and this will be B, uh, IB. In the case of negative sequence, it will be reverse. Okay. Now, what we said, we will do in such a way this combination of A phase or C phase in, in such a way that a phase current will be lagging by 60 degree from the voltage so this angle will be 60 degree so c phase in that case c phase current will be this c phase voltage will be lagging by 60 degree from the current so this will be vc so this current this is the current so it is lagging by 60 degree this will be making combinations such a way rc and xc or c phase rc and xc we make combination in such a way so that this angle will be 60 degree and then what will happen? VA and it is a positive. V and this is a positive sequence voltage will be nullified. Then this only the V B I B I B I B so there will be no current in V and V C. They are they are nullify each other. So positive sequence voltage or positive sequence current is nullified. And here what will happen? In that case, as the IC over here, so the V C will be this will be the V C. V C will be leaking by 40 degrees. So so these will not be nullified. So what will happen? This IC and VIA, these two current will be make a resultant current in the system, and that current will be flowing. Okay. So in that case, this will happen this way. So the only the negative sequence current will flow through the relay, and relay will operate on the negative sequence. In this way, by negative sequence filter or positive sequence filter, in another way, you can say we can protect this unbalanced protection. This is another way. In case of individual motor, we can provide the protection. By this way, this is a breaker and this is the motor. We will provide two CT on the A phase or any two phases we put two CT with the RC and SC combination and then this will protect the motor. Suppose this is a A phase and this is a C phase and this will be in the relay. This combination will be inside the relay. The relay will protect this motor from the unbalanced protection. So there is a two way we can do this either by unbalanced uh, by the voltage balance relay on the bus or by the individual motor meter by these two CT we can protect the motor. Now uh, about the rotor protection, rotor we have discussed already the starter uh, overheating protection either by overcurrent protection we can protect or by the separate RTD. Now as the rotor is rotating working on the short circuit condition, so uh, rotor uh, if there is a overheating in the rotor in the both cases the, we have seen the overheating of the rotor possibility from higher either by negative sequence current or unbalanced current in another way we can see uh, there is a possibility of overheating of the rotor and in the lock rotor condition there is a uh, short circuit current will be following high value uh, there is no chance so in the case of negative sequence heating rotor heating will be there but as the rotor is running on over, over, uh, over lock rotor condition is running on this uh, short circuit condition ultimately this heating will be transferred in the inside motor so negative sequence protection already we have provided and that can protect the rotor overheating okay and in case of you know induction motor we have said there are two type of rotor one type of case rotor and it is a wound rotor in the case of in case of uh, 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 case rotor this rotor this uh, the rotor body is the made of lamination sheets and pumps together these are the lamination sheets pumps together and on that sheet there is a slots there is a pumps there is a nozzle inside this inside the nozzle we have we put normally the 
metallic plate and which will be short circuited at both ends. This way the case, is, case rotor is made. In case of wound rotor, in this nozzles, we don't put the metal bar, we put a windings. Inside we put the windings and those winding on end, suppose this is a winding, there are three windings, A phase, B phase, C phase winding, but the winding is put inside. Suppose this is a rotor, if we see the rotor, rotor surface will be like this. This is a rotor. So these nozzles are like this. There is an open nozzles over here. These are the open nozzles all over the nozzle. And there is a, either there we can put a copper or aluminium bar inside or we can put a winding. If I put the winding inside and this winding is shorted, one end of the shorted, if both ends in shorted, that can be possible, then we call a wound rotor. And wound rotor can be two types with a silly bring, without silly bring. If both ends are shorted, then it will be like a case rotor. But sometimes, you know, this uh, wound rotor is used another application. In case of induction motor, uh, induction motor starting torque, the, uh, the maximum torque produced by the induction motor is fixed. But at this uh, starting torque, maximum torque, at what is speed this maximum torque takes place? This is the maximum torque. And this is the slip axis and this is your torque axis. Now, this maximum torque, at what slip? It can be like this. this there are the various possibilities. This maximum torque come like this. Maximum torque can be coming at the at the weight the slip equal to one. That is also possible. So by this depend at what slip the maximum torque take place. That depend on the rotor resistance. Okay. So by changing the rotor resistance, by increasing the rotor resistance, we can shift the maximum torque towards the zero axis towards the slip equal to one. So if R two rotor resistance is equal to the R one starter resistance S square plus reactance S square. In that case, rotor resistance at that case, in this maximum torque take place at slip equal to 1. So that is actually this if this type of application is required. In that case, we go by the wound rotor with the slip ring arrangement. In that case, this three winding which we put on the rotor is both end is not shorted. One end of the winding is shorted. Suppose this is a three winding on the rotor, A phase, B phase, and C phase. One end in case of in either case case rotor or wound rotor without slipping both end is shorted. Okay, but in case of wound rotor where the starting torque uh, changing is required, the position is required. In that case, we bring this to a slip slip ring. These are two three slip ring, and this slip ring is connected with a brush. Okay, this is a brush connection. This is a brush connection. This three brush is going, and then we are connecting to a. A resistance over here outside. This resistance is locating outside the motor. These are the variable resistance in a resistance box. By changing the resistance, the rotor resistance can be varied. If this type of arrangement required, then we go by the, this type of wound rotor with the slip ring. There are three slip ring where three faces are connected. This is a brush and then it is going to this external resistance. In that case, what we can do, if this is the arrangement, where this arrangement is made when we need to increase the or we, we want we need to change the maximum torque location along the slip axis and if we do a during a start during a start time we need to uh, input this maximum torque in that case we increase the rotor resistance and we can do this thing in this condition so uh, this type of wound rotor if this is the type of wound rotor in that case rotor resist uh, rotor uh, overheating condition we can monitor how we can monitor we can connect this resistance value from this brush point, we can tap off this equivalent resistance of this three winding and that equivalent resistance we can connect to a western bridge. Yeah, suppose we, you know, we know the western bridge has four arms and with the four resistance. Yeah, these are the four arms and these arms, this last arm and there is a, this is a last arm is connected. This is the resistance of this rotor. It is, this is a rotor resistance. Okay, so this rotor resistance is connected over here. Okay, this is equivalent rotor resistance. Then we connect here on uh, ammeter, and this is we connected voltage supply over here. Voltage, okay, DC voltage. Then this uh, now when this is normally when it's balanced, no ammeter reading is there. But when this resistance value get uh, imbalance, we just increase. Suppose this is arrangement we are tapping on the brush point, and when this resistance value now uh, the rotor resistance value. If the rotor temperature goes up, then automatically the rotor resistance, what we will do, the rotor, rotor resistance will also go up. If the rotor resistance goes up, then automatically there will be imbalance or there will be current. And we can run a strip chart recorder. With this magnitude, we can put this ammeter needle or ammeter here, we can put a strip chart recorder 
which has a contact on the back side, the resistive chart recorder will represent the rotor temperature or rotor resistance value and then from the recorder we can take the alarm or trip contact. By that way, in case of untimed rotor, we can monitor the winding temperature uh, uh, for this time uh, of arrangement. Okay? But for any other type, uh, in case of uh, even this arrangement, we can put in the synchronous motor also, if the synchronous motor has a silvering arrangement. In that case also, rotor resistance we can monitor or rotor temperature we can monitor. But in case of case rotor or this wound rotor without silvering, we cannot use this, we cannot monitor this rotor, rotor temperature. Rotor over temperature will be more controlled by the uh, face side or the starter side protection, either over current protection or by lock rotor protection. Okay? or by this your 4090 because when this unbalanced condition takes place in that case a starter winding will go up due to skin effect also or due to high frequency there is a skin effect for that also the starter winding with temperature rotor winding temperature both will go up okay so this way we can protect we can protect the rotor winding from over temperature condition now we'll come to the uh, next point is your uh, rotor art fault protection now in case of a starter winding, uh, in case of case rotor or the slip ring, uh, wound rotor without slip ring, where uh, art fall protection has no meaning because it is operating on the short circuit condition already. Okay, so in that case, separate art fall protection is not required, but for the synchronous motor or with the induction motor, wound rotor, rotor with a slip ring arrangement, in that case, art fall protection of the starter is in, rotor is important. And we have already discussed in case of SS generator how we protect the rotor art fall protection. We have seen by potentiometer or by AC current injection, we can protect the rotor from the art fault. The same thing we can do, this is a, in case of a synchronous motor, the field or the exciter winding, field winding, it has a DC, a DC winding, it has a positive DC supply, it is coming through the silvering. We have seen in case of, uh, this is a, this is your uh, rotor, uh, rotor field, uh, rotor. In case of AC synchronous motor, what we said, we put a, uh, resistance or potentiometer over here, center point of the potentiometer we tap off and then we connect a 64 art fault relay over here on grounded. So if there is any art fault somewhere on the winding, suppose there is a winding, there is art fault. If there is an art fault on the winding, then immediately art fault current will flow through this. Yeah, and it will go. This is a connected, this is a this is a positive, this is negative. So if there is an art fault over here, then immediately art fault will come will over here and it will go back. So this way we can protect this uh, 64 arc, that is a potentiometer method we discuss. Another way we can inject the AC supply to the rotor winding, AC or DC supply. From here also we can protect this uh, art fall protection. How do we do? Suppose this is a DC field winding and we inject through a capacitor, we inject a AC supply. Okay. And then there is a 64 art fall relay over here, 64 rotor art fall relay. It is grounded. When and it is injecting current, the moment there is art fault, immediately art fault current will be flowing through this. Normally it is not flowing any current, it is only keeping a charge. So the moment there is art fault on the field winding, immediately art fault current will pass through the 64, then 64 will be operated. And there is a another very simple arrangement we can make instead of doing like this, we can monitor the art fault in the rotor winding. How we do? We put a, suppose this is a rotor winding, we can put a two a small resistance or two a lamp. This is the one lamp and this is another lamp yeah and then it is a high resistance lamp and it is a center point is grounded so normally this lamp this dc supply is coming this is a high resistance lamp the glow will not very high but the moment there is art fault over here immediately the art fault current will go through this and the lamp suppose this is art fault over here then this current coming through is it is go through this art fault and it will go back okay if there is art fault it is immediately go back uh, it is coming from here it is go and then it will go back so this lamp will be high, it depends on the, whether this will go or this will go, depending on the location of the fault location, this lamp glow will change. By monitoring this way also, we can monitor the art fault condition in the rotor winding in case of motors or in the, or AC, AC motor or AC, uh, AC uh, synchronous motor. Okay, that is the way we do this uh, art fault protection on the rotor. Now, next point is a under voltage protection. Now the motor under voltage protection is very very important because you know when there is a under voltage in the motor there are two things can happen. Suppose a, uh, there is a multiple motors connected to a bus. Suppose all the motors are connected like this. Now suppose there is a, suddenly there is a under voltage in the system 
and due to under voltage motor get a stop because under voltage condition we know that torque produced by the motor is the proportional to the square of the voltage so if the voltage get down immediately torque produced will be less so it may not able to cater the required torque on the motor so motor can stop but motor is not disconnected for the system it may happen like this if that is the case then one will happen after certain time if the power supply comes back then all the motor will get started simultaneously and the power system may not have that enough capacity to cater for all the power in that case what will happen the power system upstream will trip so there will be total disturbance so we cannot tolerate this thing that is one of the thing second thing during that time if it is not trip and power system uh, this is another way it can happen power system is connected but this is under voltage power system which cannot cater for the motor so motor will be maybe a stall condition and it is trying to feed the power but in the enough power is not there due to the low voltage the or if voltage is certain low value it can run but not the required speed in that case it will try huge current also so due to high current motor winding temperature will go up so in both the cases we need to protect the motor that is on the two case another case it may happen that when there is a under voltage maybe uh, there is a auto reclosing system is there so the moment voltage goes down then the motor is stop but motor got a stop means motor is not a stop suppose this the moment under voltage goes suppose immediately the supply suppose this supply is totally off and the motor is still rotating maybe after 2 second motor come back this supply comes up or maybe 10 or maybe 100 millisecond the supply come back so the supply going and come back 100 time is 100 millisecond this 100 millisecond motor will not come stand still motor will be rotating so there will be induced there is a voltage produced by the motor that is a reverse voltage is coming on this and on this voltage the input voltage is injected again after 100 millisecond when the voltage is not fully decaying at that time supply voltage come up and these two voltage may not be the same phase it may be opposite phase if it is an opposite phase then there will be a chance of it may happen up to two times of the voltage come on the motor then motor will burn out <coughs> motor insulation will fail so that type of scenario also can take place so in avoid all this scenario we need to provide the under voltage protection on the motor so this under voltage protection we provide by simple arrangement if there is a multiple motors are connected on the bus bar we put a pt on the bus suppose there is multiple motors are connected on this so walls are motors are connected we provide under voltage relay over here 27 under voltage relay and this under voltage relay will trip the breaker when the under voltage is comes and for individual motor if we want then we have to put a pt on this so what we can do we put a pt and that pt will be connected to this under voltage relay that under voltage relay will trip this breaker so this is under voltage protection is required for that similarly in case of under frequency also you know this motor uh, the frequency if the frequency change is there there will be a if the frequency goes up there will be minor change in the efficiency there is no uh, for minor change we allow up to 10 percent plus minus voltage variation and plus minus 5 percent frequency variation we allow if this frequency go below minus 5 percent then what will happen due to the low frequency then the magnetic flux motor has to produce more magnetic flux and when magnetic flux goes up you know the magnetic flux in case of hysteresis is lost the uh, the loss is depending on the frequency but it is more dependent on the magnetic flux because because in case of eddy current loss magnetic eddy current loss man, this loss is a proportional to the a square of the magnetic flux and in case of hysteresis loss this flux this it is a depending on the 1.5 to 2.5 on the other hand here flux, it is a square a, a, a linearly proportional to frequency here it is a square of the frequency so due to change of frequency the effect the flux increase will be so much that that will be more that will be compensating the loss due to frequency but here it will be due to high flux density that h will be hysteresis law will be more so in case of low frequency the motor efficiency slightly will go down and there will be loss more loss and that loss will be converted to heat and that's why when under frequency is there there will be more heating effect so to avoid this thing we provide for the big motor we provide under frequency protection what we do we connect 81 relay over here and the 81 relay monitor the frequency and from the frequency it give the tripping command and, but that is we apply only for the big size motor for a small size motor this loss is not very significant okay because they are compensating each other at what flux density it will work then 
this uh, AC motor in this next point is a rotor undercurrent protection or loss of acceleration protection. In case of synchronous motor, if the acceleration get lost, then it, uh, motor will not work out. So this loss of acceleration protection we have already discussed in the case of uh, synchronous generator and uh, in the case of uh, DC motor, there is no acceleration business because sorry, in case of induction motor, there is no case of loss of acceleration because the rotor is working on the short circuit condition and it is not, we are not giving any external supply to the rotor. But case of induction motor, rotor is getting external DC supply for magnetization or excitation. If that loss, then the acceleration was not there, the motor will not work as a, as a synchronous motor. So how we protect this thing? We can provide a, a loss of acceleration protection in two ways. One way we can, suppose this is a field winding. This is a rotor, uh, AC motor, a yeah? synchronous motor uh, field winding. That is a uh, field winding is this. So what we can do, and uh, this is coming from positive and negative. What we can do, if the field current is low value, then we can use an undercurrent, DC undercurrent relay directly on the circuit. 37 uh, undercurrent relay, uh, it is a rotor undercurrent relay. So when the current goes below certain value, immediately lock out, this undercurrent relay will drop out. Because normally it is picked up, the moment uh, this the uh, loss of acceleration or the, the acceleration current goes certain suppose less than it goes below 80 percent immediately the relay will drop out so the, if we relay nc contact with a timer we can use a timer suppose this is nc contact of this 37 relay and it is going to the breaker trip coil suppose this 37 relay when the, this is a timer t1 so timer t1 relay timer contact okay so we are taking to this breaker trip coil or alarm circuit alarm what trip? In that case, what will happen? Normally, this relay picked up, so this is open. Timer is not energized. The moment this current drop to 80 percent, immediately this relay will drop. This contact will become NC. The T1 will picked up. The moment T1 is picked up, then immediately this contact will close. We will get alarm, or we can get the trip of this motor. So this is one of the way. But for the when the field current is high value, we cannot use relay directly. In that case, we have to use a CT. But for the DC circuit, we cannot use normal CT. We use a special type of CT which we call Hall Effect CT. Do you know Hall Effect CT is work on for the DC circuit? Uh, Hall Effect is when a plate carrying a current in a magnetic field, then this charge is deposited on the plate in two end. Suppose this is a metallic plate, which is under magnetic field. Suppose this is under magnetic field, north and south pole, and it is injected a current through this. Current is passing through the plate. When this is happened, then all the charges is accumulated at the two end of the plate. Positive charge is one side, negative charge also. There is a voltage between these two end of the plate. This voltage we can use for the various purposes. Here the same thing. The, on this principle, this CT is mount, CT is uh, made. And with this, we call this Hall effect CT. And Hall effect CT, we can use a 37 rotor protection. So in that case, if the rotor current goes below a certain value, immediately this will pick up and that will trip the breaker. Or it will give alarm that the acceleration failed. That is one of the way. But if the motor is very big and is very very important, in that case we may not depend on the overcurrent, this uh, undercurrent delay. We can use a distance delay, what we said in case of induction generator, we use a distance delay to uh, monitor to protect the motor from the loss of excitation or the out of step protection. We have said that in the case of uh, R and X, this is R and X diagram. Normally the uh, AC machine with a starter with a rotor winding supply, this working area of this impedance, total impedance seen by the motor or the generator is located over here. The moment excitation loss, immediately this due to power swing, it comes and it drop over on the this axis. It will get inside this. There are two, we can use a impedance uh, relay in such a way, it has a two characteristics. One characteristic is a small, other is big. And when this excitation loss, immediately the machine impedance will come inside this circle. So if this is outside circle, we give alarm. If it is inside circle, we give a trip. So this way for the high value machine or the very high rating machine, we can use the impedance delay for the loss of excitation or by uh, your pole slipping protection. Okay, this is this protection. Then we will discuss reverse rotation protection. Suppose some of the some of the loads, some of the mechanical load, if it rotates in the reverse rotation direction, then it can damage the load equipment. So reverse rotation, we sometimes we do not allow. Most of the cases, we don't allow the motor to be rotated in reverse direction. But you know, motor can be rotated in reverse direction if the phase sequence is reverse. Motor rotation will be changed. So if that phase sequence is get changed, then immediately motor will be rotating reverse. Then it will be automatically rotating the reverse 
direction on, on the uh, pump pump of this driven equipment and that may have a bad consequences on the motor as well as the driven equipment to protect this thing what do we do we put a directional speed switch in the motor shaft we sense the direction of the rotation by putting a sensor a speed sensor we put a speed sensor on the shaft to change the uh, direction of the speed and then this this is a 12 speed switch but is a directional speed switch with this with some timer we give the protection for the direction this is one of the way another we can make a ratchet arrangement on the shaft the moment it goes in reverse direction the ratchet arrangement will not allow immediately it will give the tipping command to the pump that is also we can make some ratchet arrangement on the shaft by which we can give the reverse rotation protection of the motor or on the driven equipment you can say okay after that we have a another protection that is called your we have discussed for the bearing for the big size motors we have a bearing and the bearing what will happen due to the uneven suppose there is a vibration coming from the pump side or from the motor side itself due to the mechanical vibration ultimately it will transfer to the bearing and then the bearing metal surface may get deteriorated or get damaged and if the damage is there then ultimately it will be causing a heating to the bearing and then it will be that heating will be further wear and tear of the bearing and that will give more and more vibration that is one of the mechanical way bearing temperature goes up there is another way so bearing most of the bearing is a self lubricant if the bearing lubrication get dried self lubricating bearing lubricant get dried in that case dry due to the dryness of the lubricant there will be there will be enough cooling in that case bearing surface temperature can come up another way suppose the bearing the uh, uh, bearing suppose this is the bearing so this bearing is cooled by external oil external oil coming it is cooling and it is going back if this is the arrangement the oil is coming from a uh, some uh, uh, container or from the some tank and if this oil level goes down here then the enough oil flow will not be there or if there is a blockage in this line then also enough air oil flow will not be the bearing in that case bearing temperature also go off so all this thing can happen either bearing itself is self lubricating bearing bearing can get dry or the loop oil it can happen the loop oil not enough flow is not there or the loop oil level has come down in that case bearing temperature can up can come up also there is a, if there is a mechanical vibration transmitted from the load side to the motor or from the motor side itself then that will be ultimately transferring to the bearing which can cause the bearing over temperature as well as bearing vibration so from that we have to protect the motor so what we do in most of the big size motor what we do we put a direct we put on the bearing there is a provision for putting the uh, bearing uh, rotating uh, fixed part on the metal contact on the fixed part we put the rtd and that rtd in the same way this rtd will measure in the uh, 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 sensing the temperature of the bearing so at that temperature at a particular temperature bearing has a Uh, RTD has a certain amount of resistance. If the bearing temperature come off, then automatically what will happen? The resistance will come off, and that resistance that we can use in the same way. Suppose this is a bearing RTD, and this RTD is coming. Suppose there are two bearing or three phase. There are three bearing RTD, and it is coming to a junction box. There are uh, normally we put one one RTD in each. Uh, there is one bearing. Normally two bearing we two RTD we provide on the bearing. Uh, so this two bearing is this RTD. is coming to a junction box and it has some resistance that means this bearing is ultimately converted to a resistance value this is a resistor equivalent resistance value this resistance value we put a rtd relay that rtd is actually nothing it is a western bridge where the three resistance is already included with the dc supply and this resistance we add as a fourth so normal condition when it is a ambient temperature this resistance is balanced with the bridge the moment temperature goes up the resistance value gets changed immediately the bridge get unbalanced then there will be unbalancing current which we already discuss about this thing and then the unbalanced current will give a uh, the, uh, it will be uh, monitoring and the unbalanced current it goes above the uh, value then corresponding it will give a alarm or tick that way this uh, rtd work and by that way we give the protection to the uh, bearing uh, protection now bearing vibration also same way we have already discussed for the synchronous motor how we put the bearing bearing vibration in that case how do we put this is a uh, shaft and on this way the bearing is mounted if there is a vibration in the shaft it will be transferred to the bearing so we put a magnet we put a pick up we put a vibration sensor that sensor could be speed sensor it could be velocity sensor it could be acceleration sensor we have discussed piezoelectric type strain type capacitive type even a various type of sensor we have discussed those sensor will pick up this signal and that signal will be converted to 
from the signal it will go to the uh, uh, device where it will be converted all output is a electrical in nature if it is a resistance uh, output then it will go to which time bridge if it is electrical output then this if suppose it is a current output of the pickup then the current will go to the amplifier and then it will drive the respective equipment relay and that will give a alarm or trip command for the motor when the vibration goes above this but nowadays this vibration is not we are monitoring completely vibration monitoring arrangement where this vibration pickup will go either in electrical form either current or resistance form and that will be captured in the vibration monitoring device then it will display the value and then it will also can it can decide depending on the program it can decide whether it will give alarm or trip command to the motor so this will be the vibration monitoring arrangement for the big size of motor these are the various protection we provide for the motor now let us uh, wind up this various protection which we have discussed now how and how we apply for the various rating of motors if we see the various rating of motors then uh, various rating of motor we can divide the motor class in motors under three category up to 500 hp suppose below 100 hp this one category and then 100 hp to 500 hp one category then 500 hp to 1500 hp and other is a more than 1500 hp this type of category we can make below 100 hp motor normally what we do we put a mccb or fuse then we put a contactor and then we put thermal overload relay and this is the motor sometime we put a earth fault protection by cbct over here with a 50n protection we can provide for the small size up to below 100 hp motor this is the standard protection so this overload protection taken care by this any earth fault on the motor is taken by 50n any short circuit protection is provided by this breaker or by if we use a fuse we can fuse can protect the motor so this below 100 hp motor this is a standard protection for the motor but if the motor is more than 100 hp to 500 hp in that case what protection we will provide we will provide most of the protection that is a, a starting from 50 we can instant in as over current protection we provide then we provide 50 and instant in as artfall protection then we can provide 51 in over current artfall protection and then we provide 51 okay these are the protection we provide and 50 n in this case if this 50 n by cbct we cannot provide in that case with this 51 n we provide 50 n also okay but in case of, if we cbct is there then we 50 n will not be provided okay then we provide thermal overload protection we have already said 49 we provide either by this overload uh, overload relay or if this covered by this 51 we check with the thermal characteristics whether it is covered by 51 or not if not then separate 59 protection is to be provided and the 50 is already there this is the protection normally we provide for this 100 to 500 hp motor in addition to this we provide another protection we have forget to state explain repetitive start which is called 66 66 is repetitive start how we do this when every motor as per nema uh, mg1 there is a regulation that any motor can be given a start to successive start from the cold condition if the motor is a stand still for a long time and you come first time a start the motor you give first start motor does not start you can give try another start immediately that is called two successive start but if the motor is running it suddenly got a stop and then you want to start then you can give only one start that means about hot that is what you call hot condition from the cold condition you can give two successive start and from the cold condition hot condition you can give only one start so if you give the more start of that then motor will may fail so how we prevent this protection there is a normal when this electro by using electromagnetic relay what we do the moment we give the start command then we are pressing some push button that push button contact energize a timer so this timer will count the time suppose uh, is a hot condition one start is given then second start will be given after one hour so this timer will be setting at 60 minutes so once this start command is given this timer will picked up and then this timer contact will be connected in the contactor or breaker closing circuit so breaker will not or contact will not close till the time is elapsed this way we can protect from the repetitive start but nowadays in a solid state relay we can program this thing the moment we give the start immediately motor will understand there is a start command has come at that time motor can also um, calculate or it has a memory where it can cumulative heat how much heat it is produced it can keep that image and then how much image how much time has gone with that time how much heat has been dissipated that also it can 
calculate. So depending calculating this generation of heat and the loss of heat or the amount of heat is dissipated, they can this motor relay can calculate how much heat at this moment when that heat total heat cumulative heat value below the respective which stand time then only motor will allow to second start in the software we can do this, this thing with the intelligent delay but without intelligent delay if we put the protection then we have to with the starting device with the timer we have to do this repetitive start protection so this repetitive start protection up to 100 to 150 psp motor we can provide the repetitive start that is called 66 that is the repetitive start protection that is we give to 100 to 500 psp motor in 500 HP to 1500 HP motor, we provide all this protection. In addition, we put the lock loader protection 49, separate lock loader protection 51 LR. We provide separate lock loader 51 LR. Then we put a negative sequence protection 46, also we provide. And then we provide this undercurrent protection of the starter. Suppose some of the pumps, some of the some of the load, we have already said that a motor suppose driving a pump. Now if the pump suddenly pump, you know, pump is getting cooled, pump impeller get cooled by the current flowing through the, uh, uh, sorry, the flow going through the uh, uh, your uh, pump. If this flow gets down, immediately pump impeller temperature goes up and which can deteriorate the pump impeller. So at a certain, below certain flow, we do not allow to run the pump. Now suddenly the pump is sucking some fluid from the unknown area where we cannot see it. And if suddenly that suppose it is uh, taking oil from the underground and suddenly current in the motor gets dropped, what does it indicate? That means driven equipment is not accessing more current. That means driven equipment is not supplying required flow. So that means there is a low flow condition in the driven equipment. Immediately we need to tip the pump, uh, tip the motor. So this is by sensing the undercurrent, we put the CT on the uh, three phase. Uh, this, uh, suppose this is a breaker and this is a motor. So what do we do? What do we do? We put a CT over here and then we connect a 37 undercurrent relay. So normally this relay is picked up. The moment there is undercurrent, this relay will drop and it will trip the breaker. That will indicate that if there is a low flow condition. So under low flow condition, it has happened. This undercurrent protection for the starter also we provide for this motor. 37 undercurrent protection also we provide for this year. And then if it is a AC synchronous motor, we will provide 37 of this. A rotor uh, undercurrent protection as well as loss of loss of total loss of uh, loss of uh, uh, excitation or pole slipping protection you also provide for this motor up to 1500 hp but if the motor rating is more than 1500 hp in above in that case all this protection will be there in addition if the rating is more than 1500 hp in addition we provide the differential protection what we have discussed then we provide also 59 over voltage protection to the motor if the V by A ratio is not constant then we put the 38 bearing temperature then we provide 39 bearing vibration also we provide okay then we provide under frequency protection 81 under current under frequency that also we provide in addition to all this protection we provide differential protection over voltage protection provided V by A ratio is not maintaining constant then we provide a bearing temperature, bearing vibration and under frequency protection also we provide for the motor if it is more than 1500 HP. So this is the application of the various protection. This is a guideline also, but case to case we can change it and we can verify it how it will be there. In addition to this, I want to discuss another point on this the last point I want to discuss for this size of motor 1500 HP and big motor. Uh, this motor normally not the air cooled motor. These motors are uh, not by not by natural air cooled either there is a forced air cooling or by the water cooling motor and if the motor is located in explosive uh, hazardous area obviously the motor will be water cooled motor now this water cooled motor or forced air cooled motor how the motor is getting cooled suppose this is a motor now this air will be blown to the motor if it is a air, air forced motor a forced air cooling motor then air will be from the blower the air will be coming to this motor and it will be getting in and it will be getting out with the hot air. Now if this blower fail, then the cooling will not be there, motor temperature will go up. For that we have a water temperature protection. But in addition to this, we detect directly this blower condition. So what we do, this blower when the air is coming, it comes through a filter. There is the air filter here and then the filtered air will go inside the machine. Now there are two ways we can do, we can put a flow switch. On the output of the blower, we can put a flow switch 
flows we will monitor the adequate amount of flow if the adequate amount of flow is not there then the flow switch suppose the flow switch is a 13 the flow switch contact with the timer will be giving the alarm it will not give the tip it will give the if it is an attended motor then it will give a alarm then control room operator will come and see the condition okay either it will give 13 uh, alarm uh, either it is by flow switch or you can do another way we can in the across the filter we can put a pressure switch okay this pressure switch if there is a enough there is a heavy pressure drop in the filter that means filter got blocked with that pressure switch with the timer we can also protect this we can monitor the blow condition air flow condition so this is a in case of force here but if this uh, motor is getting cooled by water water cool if it is water cooled motor then the water will be coming from the water tank yeah through a pump and then it is coming to the motor suppose this is a motor there is a header over here in connected to the header yeah? and then it will be coming it will be going uh, going uh, sub, it will be going back to the tank okay this is the way it will work out there is a main header in the motor motor header it is getting in and getting out now if this pump fail or the, even though there is no liquid there is a liquid uh, the water leaked in that case enough flow will not be there so here also we do the same thing either we put a pressure switch to measure the uh, uh, not pressure switch we put a flow switch over here to, to uh, we put a flow switch to measure how much water flow is going if the flow is not adequate for any reason then immediately the flow switch will give the signal and with the signal with the timer we take to the alarm or we can take the trip otherwise on the header area we can put a pressure switch it will monitor the at what pressure water is coming if that pressure is not enough then the pressure switch will be activated and it will give a alarm or trip to the motor this way we can protect this force cooling motor for the big size motor more than 100 hp i uh, sorry 1500 hp motor we if the motor is a force cooling or water pool we provide this monitoring arrangement and the corresponding alarm we do not trim the pump we just take a monitor alarm contact and alarm and then operate is coming up but if this uh, is an unattended motor in that case pressure we may put a two pressure switch one pressure switch for the alarm another pressure switch for the trip that will be the normal practice for this type of motor so with this we are closing the motor protection today so if you have any queries please uh, let me know uh, i will try to uh, look into that uh, queries and respond to you and thank you very much indeed for your continued support thank you